Do men get intimidated by me? Probably guys that didn't know me would think her arms are bigger than mine. Yeah, so they could. You've got some people that absolutely think, what are you doing? Why would you choose to get hit? You're a, you're a female. You know, women deserve just as much respect on a football field as the men do. You know, my family's really supportive because they see how happy I am and that I'm fit and I'm healthy. Having the physique of, a, of an athlete, it's just something you've got to work on and build. Your body, you know, can transform into, you know, pretty much like a machine, I think. It's transformed me, I think, over the last sort of six months. Not just exterior, but like the interior as well. It's just made me so much more confident. I love it. Like, I will play it as long as my body holds up. You know, I was 30 when I found Gridirons and I'm one of the older girls in, in the group. So we'll come soon, you know, we're gonna have more exhibition games December 12th, try and get it out to the community and get it seen, I guess, and then it will be more accepted. I don't listen to anybody who says, oh, you should give it up, you're too old. I don't listen to that sort of talk. I, I, to make, I always think, oh, well, they're either jealous of what you do or they can't be bothered doing it. So. I just go ahead and, and live my own life. Everyone used to say, you never walk anywhere. When I was about eight or nine, I ran. Well, it must have been in my legs or somewhere to tell me, well, run, have a run. But I, I just love doing it. And I think that half of, of the battle. <laughs> I've been playing sport since I was 16 years old for the Short Statured People of Australia. I play basketball. It's exactly the same size court, it's the same size ball and it's the same size hoop as any regular basketballer. I also do sprinting and I'm also a swimmer. The type of dwarfism I have is called achondroplasia and I'm the only person in my family that has it. When my parents found out that I had it when I was four months old, it came to quite a surprise, considering it has never been in our family before. And pretty much it just means that I'm shorter than the average height. So like everyone says, I can do anything else just um, differently. And it has affected my life in a positive way, I think, like kind of made me who I am today. And it's become very well known in society that it doesn't really affect anyone anymore. It just means that you're a bit different, you're a bit diverse, and having it has been like a very lucky thing to have, I feel. Playing sport, especially from our community, for me personally, I can speak for myself, I didn't really have any problems with my family. They had uh, supported me playing sport ever since I started. There's some, there's a mix, mixed opinions within the community though that believe that women should play sport and or believe or have a different opinion where they think um, they shouldn't but for me personally um, my family supported me so that was more than enough. Our girls keep on coming every single week because they have that sense of belonging and they keep on coming because we have we, we structured our club and our team to have that social in inclusiveness um, to accept everyone no matter where they come from. We had one experience where the only Anglo came to join our team in our first ever season. Everyone else was from an Arab background. And she came to our club and from her experience, she said that, that the reason why I kept on coming, why I loved you girls so much is because you are so welcoming. And we, we had that from the beginning to accept everyone and anyone. I was so, so nervous. And the rest of the girls had all competed before. They knew what the feeling was like. And I remember backstage, I was the only one practicing the movements behind the wings and my friend was like, stop, you need to calm down. And I was like, oh, I'm so nervous. And I got on stage and I was hoping that I wasn't going to stuff up. My mum was crying, yet she was really emotional. And I don't remember the feeling on stage, I just remember the feelings before. But Afterwards, I was so surprised because I won the competition and I was so happy and so relieved and I just wanted to perform again. It was, yeah, an exhilarating feeling. It was really good. I don't snowboard competitively. I snowboard just for myself and for the pure enjoyment of it. I've been doing that since I was 16 and pretty much ever since then, been chasing the snow around the world. 
I did most of my snowboarding in America. Uh, I've also snowboarded in Kashmir. I've been to Europe, uh, spent quite a lot of time in Japan and New Zealand to snowboard. My favourite places be India, the craziness that is India, and China, because the countryside's actually really beautiful. I snowboard better when I snowboard with guys. It's possibly me trying not to be stereotypically girly because I don't like hanging out with girls. I like hanging out with guys because they're easy to hang out with. They give me an edge that I don't always have when I'm snowboarding on my own. Definitely an addiction. I think on the same note though, being Asian and growing up with certain Asian expectations, there's a battle inside me as well. Uh, I come from the Bunjalung Nation. It was a family tradition going to the beach, especially growing up on the coast. I started surfing uh, because of my father. When I was a kid, I used to be really, really scared of the beach. My father would take me out and get smashed by waves. And yeah, it was scary being a kid and going out there <laughs> in big waves. But as I got bigger, I, don't know, I enjoyed it. Um, to be in the top 10 in the world, it's okay, I guess. I'd like to be number one. but. Um, Probably the most memorable achievement award I've received is probably um, the Indigenous Award. We had a big Bundjalung Sports Sports Awards night, and um, yeah, it was it was a great honour because I went up against a lot of um, a lot of great people from boxing and everything. <laughs> so that was probably one of my most memorable. I loved sailing and being out on the water. I actually hated sailing for the first couple of years, but I just kept going. The biggest challenge I face in sailing is trying to figure out how to do things my way, which can often take a lot of time and effort and practice, and there may have been why it took me so long to get into sailing and start enjoying it, as it took me some time to figure out ways to properly tack the boat without losing control. Um, in other people's eyes, people tend to respect me because I can keep up with their level and that sort of stuff, and it also makes people realise that having a disability really isn't anything, because I can do the same thing as everyone else in what they can do. So, from my disability, I have definitely grown a lot of ability. I believe I push myself more than the average person. Being involved in swimming opened many doors of opportunity to me. I travelled to places I would never have imagined seeing and I formed friendships I never would have made. The life lessons I gained through sport participation and that I have utilised throughout the course of my life so far never say no to opportunities self-confidence is crucial to success and they you your support network my flatmates were really into yoga so i gave that a go and i don't like that and you know so I'm like, oh let's get into cycling i bought a bicycle i really wasn't into that every single time it got too hard i would panic and quit and derby was the first thing i found that i wanted it more than the panic i wanted it so bad i remember like the first day when we were like those 70 girls in the room and I'm like, I'm never going to get this. And I'm like, just, just don't be that girl. Don't be that girl. You can do this. I did it. I did it. Everybody was accepted. It didn't matter what you looked like, you know. Yes, I was the fat girl that came to the tryouts. Everybody was invited. If you were old, if you were fat, if you were too skinny, if you were too short, if you were too tall, if you were too fit, whatever. Because, you know, in every situation there's going to be an exception, except in Derby. Everybody was welcomed. I didn't have to change who I was. I would be accepted as I am and, and taken for what I could bring to it. When I was working in a top tier law firm, I was teaching pole dancing at the same time. So by day I was doing law and by night I was doing pole. And during the daytime, it just felt like I was in this place where you know, it was in a concrete jungle. And then at night time I would go to the pole studio. Everyone would be in their pink polka dot hot pants upside down. It felt like you were actually making a difference to people's lives and making the world a better place. I'm a lifer in this industry, I think. With the yoga, it helps you to master yourself, you know, to be in control of yourself. And yoga's changed a lot. There's so many yogas and every yoga class is different today. It's, but it's still beautiful because you look after the physical, you look after the mental, you look after the emotional, and what do we go back to? Spirit. So it takes care of it all. So if you, you follow the yoga path, can't hurt anyone, can only do good. There's probably not much reason why a, a woman couldn't be the world number one. 
Yeah, in a way, I think it's an equivalent glass ceiling in sport, uh, being imposed uh, by, by the people in governance in sport. I guess it's uh, the, the sports and politics has probably become a natural part of, of my life because of my own journey, you know, because I'm basically a, a transitioned woman, which means basically I was born in a boy's body. So I've had to transition and have treatment to, uh, you know, become an, and live as a woman today. Uh, so that's been a bit of an issue in sport and in golf um, because of lots of preconceived ideas. So I've had to, to lobby the different golf organisations so to actually have rules changed and I've enjoyed the whole exercise of, uh, of being able to educate people. I've had it in my personal life and then it extended into the media with my golf, the professional golf career as well. And it's fabulous that golf <clears throat> has this, you know, it gets international focus. Um, when media things happen, so when something happens with me then I was able to, in some cases, have an international voice, which I really loved having that opportunity. Well, I hope to play it, to play cricket at a high level, like maybe for New South Wales or even Australia, because it would be a massive honour and it would be, it would just be a lot different to what I'd ever, like any representative cricket that I've ever done. So when I ride my horse in the arena, I feel like I'm part of him and I feel like he is part of me. We go around as though we're one. Dressage, I'm very thankful, is a sport that can take me for my whole lifetime to do. It's a sport that it's not age limiting. We don't have to be in our prime youth to be out there competing and winning medals on, on the horse for dressage. I love the sport because it's something I can do forever. You know, whether you're a male or a female, your gender's irrelevant to driving, so it's, there's definitely no reason why a woman can't be as good as a man in the car. You only know where the limit is if you, you know, go over it. I question a lot saying, you know, what, what's it like to be a female in, in rallying? And I sort of, you know, I don't know what it's like to be a male in rallying. It's, you know, it's what I know, it's what it is. And I think it's, you know, very much the same for, for all girls in sport. It's, it's not so much about you know, being the women, woman doing something, it's you know, doing what you love to do and working really hard to be the best at it. <laughs>